badass Bobby Williams. Moving around like he's got the whole town on lockdown. Look at him. Filling his living on the street. Oh, this explains why my numbers are all sheets of down at the high schools. Same kid used to book bets at McManus, right? Yes, sir. You know, 20 years ago, you'd draw on a guy with a wreck, wind up with a second asshole. Now, every now and back motherfucker and his brother make a move on you. So we overplayed his hand. No big deal. He don't know what the price of poker has just gone up. Hey, Whitey. You know. Miss Lopez? Simone? Okay, Simone. We can do this easy. We'll have to break down the door. Probably feed on that, Simone. Okay, sissy boy, turn her over. Didn't your mother ever tell you it's not nice to call people names? For bleeding, you got a big mouth. Now get out of the way. I'm not Simone either. I guess she's not here. Maybe you should wait downstairs. Can't take it. Hand him one of the button, he'll fall. It. I guess you think that's funny. Me calling another guy old. I'm not one of this year's kisses. 38. An insurance racket or selling bonds or anything else for the fighting game? They say you're still young when you're 38. But when you're a fighter, you're a worn out palooka. Start talking funny, dodging things that ain't there. Crowds keep yelling your name because they want to see you get knocked out cold. And you know something? Maybe five, ten years ago, you were their hero, their favorite boxer. What the hell do they care now? Why don't you say something, kid? Are you nervous? Yeah. Don't be nervous. You got nothing to be nervous about. Here's my first pro bout. So what? You got what it takes, you're young. I got no experience, have I? You don't have a glass chin yet. Only good, they'll never give me another match. That's the attitude. 
Do or die. Who are you fighting? Blackie Shaw. Blackie Shaw. That slap happy Paluti still around? You'll bust him into the middle of next week. I know him, do you? <laughs> I've seen him fight. He's plenty big, ain't he? Plenty of beef, but no form. No technique. For you, it's a breeze. It's a push off. Is that so? Yeah. He's a sucker for a left uppercut. He leaves himself wide open. You wade right in there, on the chin, on the bread basket. You fold his tents like the Arabs. I guess you know a good deal about boxing. I've seen a lot of fights in my time. From inside and inside the ring. Mm. I've known some real scrappers. <sighs> Take it easy, kid. What's the use of burning shoe leather? Mm -hmm. Sit down. Ever heard of a palooka named Galveston Joe? Sure. He wasn't no palooka. He was a light heavyweight champ. I bet you asked him he was no palooka. You know he wasn't. You know what's become of that guy? I don't know. Must have quit fighting by now. Yeah, he retired. I heard he lined his pockets with lots of Mazuma. He lots of dough. Sure. He was a big time or a small guy, too. Everybody liked him. When's the last you heard of him? I don't know. I was a kid selling papers. He was my hero then. Galveston Joe. I had his picture pasted up in my bedroom. Did you? I used to stand up and square off. But I myself just like him, the light heavyweight champ. Why not? You're going places. I remember that time he came to town for his match with the Mexican Puma. Yeah, yeah, the Puma. That was a breeze for him. Those kids, they all just mobbed the station. Must have been thousands of them all just shouting for Galveston Joe. The women, too. Yeah, the women. He's fighting to get up to see him. Kissing him and begging for him to sign his name. Jerking buttons off his coat, snatching his green carnation. Green? If he's Irish, you know. So you see him? Nah. I can imagine. See, I used to know him. Did you? I guess I did. I used to work in his corner. I used to give him a sponge. God. That would be an honor to give him a sponge. Honor? Hell, it was a privilege, boy. Say, I just would have liked to have been a friend to Galveston. He. Something about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of glamour. That's what he had. That's what they call it in Hollywood. That's it, glamour. Lived like the King of Sam. Stopped in the best hotels. Always traveled in the drawing room. Spent money like water. Best accommodations, never too good for old Joe. Generous, too. Ask him for a five or a ten spot, go on. He'll give you half a grand. Where is he now, you know? Sure. South America. Yeah, he's made a big fortune down there in the oil business. That's why you don't hear him mention so much anymore. He retired from the fighting game, made good on Wall Street. I mean, the Argentine Board of Trade. Through Sports Hall of Fame. That was a phenomenal introduction. Uh, there's so many people here that I have to thank and people that aren't here. But first and foremost, like I've always had throughout my whole career, I don't know how many of you watch my fights, but I've done this throughout my whole professional boxing career. I give all the glory in my career to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and my Father in Heaven and the Holy Spirit, who all three are same, and I believe that. And, you know, it's like my second pro fight, I don't know why I'm going into this, but this, I really had a revelation. I was fighting this fight, I was overmatched. I really didn't take boxing too seriously early in my career. And he was a real hard puncher, and I was overmatched in the Westchester County Center, May 1980. And boom, I came with a shot and down. This is my first fight in the County Center. Boom, down again. Right? Then I get up, hit the guy with a left hook and knocked him on cold. And I said, you know, 
Throw them a calling card for me to wake up and say, hey, Doug, you're going to be committed now, you're going to be dedicated. But I just felt like God and my father were in the ring with me, and I said, this is really amazing how I did this. I don't know where my punch came from to this day. <laughs> it was a terrific left tuck. But I have to go to the Lord, God, and then I want to thank my parents. My father and mother had a great father in the formative years. He got very sick when I was a teenager, and things were very tough financially in the house. Oh, brother, I just want to thank Connor for shutting off my electricity 30 years ago. It was perfect. <laughs> and, uh, start this man off by saying a couple of things happened in the time. Um, and now I'm going to talk about what Larry had to say and what Snipes had to say. The first was that I, I ate something today. I was definitely sick. I really, honestly, I'm sick as a dog right now. I just sat here. And I'm more sick after listening to Snipes. But I told him that I told him an hour ago, two drinks, Snipes. You didn't stop. He's totally drunk. That's okay. He's my friend. And um, so you gotta think about me now. I'm throwing up in the bathroom. I, I don't mean to say it. Seriously. That's how sick I was. And I gotta come in and have an hour step squeeze my leg for one hour. I have bruises now. I have bruises coming on my leg. He's squeezing my leg. Play that song. I just like the song. And I don't know why I'm here either. I'm not really a comic, but I have balls, you know. And, uh, yeah, I'm really fucked. I have to piss and shit. That wasn't funny. <laughs> but I do. I laugh at my own jokes, too. Um, all right. You know, I, I did like about nine stand-up comedy shows since August, and I never really tell jokes. I mean, what kind of comic doesn't tell jokes? But I just like got into my own little thing, little stories. But I'm going to tell a couple jokes tonight. You might have heard some of them, so if you know them, don't give it the punchline. You don't have to see you outside after the show. We don't want that. And the last time when they announced that I was middleweight champion of the world, a couple of people laughed. And <laughs> when I watched the tape, I was like, what are they laughing about? They don't, they don't fucking believe the, the girl? We'll pick it outside after the show and they'll see I was fucking middleweight champion of the world. All right. I'm just kidding. I'm not a violent person. Even though I wasn't a very violent sport, but it was a sport. But um, why does Mike Tyson cry during sex? Why? Mace will do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh,